So the software defined data center, um, a lot has been said today. Um, a lot of storages that, that came by, a lot of cloud. Um, and first of all, I want to introduce myself. Um, my name is Arjan Timmerman. Um, you can find me on Twitter. I work as a software defined data center specialist for Natus IT. Do something with Tag Unplugged together with Enrico, and I have a blog, vdicloud.nl. Hi all, uh, I'm Yannick Arends, uh, also a blogger at, at uh, Arjan's blog, and work uh, as uh, SDDC consultant by Metis IT. And I will give the demo uh, in Arjan's presentation. So, first of all, um, you already mentioned it, so let's do it a bit different. Um, just call a few buzzwords, and um, I'll, I'll go on. The, the agenda is okay. Just call a few buzzwords, and you can win something. But for those who really want to win something, I want to hear why you think it's a buzzword. So kick it off. Symmetry. <laughs> why? <laughs> Next. As a service. Okay, okay. And why? Doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Okay. So you want Dutch chocolate or you want Stroop waffles, as you call them? <laughs> By the way, it's Stroop waffles, but that's not a thing. <laughs> you can. Here you go. Next one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Things on the internet. Things on the internet. Okay, that's a good one. You want chocolate or? Chocolate. I'll put it over here. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can pass it. Okay. I still got two, so. You go for the stroopwafels, right? No, chocolate. Okay. So, they're still stroopwafels. Because it's always been written. You still have stroopwafels, probably. Who gets the microphone? So, yeah. I think there's a, a lot of these going around. And um, so, for me, what is a software-defined data center? It all starts with physical stuff, right? Compute, storage, network. Um, and on top, of that, on top of that, we use um, the software-defined layer, um, software-defined compute, um, probably server virtualization, but I'll go into that a little deeper um, in a couple of slides. Software-defined storage, we talked about it a lot today, I guess. And software-defined networking, um, we did a little bit about that also. And then you would have the software-defined data center. But for me, software-defined data center means more than just being on top of the physical hardware in your own data center. We talk about hybrid private and public cloud, and how are we all going to leverage that? So for me, the software-defined data center is the bridge between all of those. And still also be able to manage your own traditional IT environment. But as we said in, on the beginning, um, it's not about us only standing here in front of you. I want to hear from you what you think the software defined data center will bring for you. And I think we saw a lot of things coming by. Um, and I think you all will pledge your life and fortune to SDDC, right? After what you heard today. Or not? 
<laughs> okay, okay. So again, what is the software defined data center? We had this one already, but I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into what is the software defined compute? What is virtualization, server virtualization? It's not only about the virtual machines anymore. It's about the virtual machines, but also the containers. I think um, Nigel, who left, probably because um, his uh, MiFi that we could use um, ran out of uh, credits. <laughs> but okay, it's probably not a container or something. I don't know. So, but it's also about unikernels. And I think there's a, a, a great thing in this that um, if you look at, here is the hypervisor is Zen. Um, it could be something else also. But if you look at Zen and probably VMware are the only two that can really drive into all of these. So do the containers, do the unikernels, and containers can also be done on bare metal, right? So it's all about what are you going to use in your data center. Um, not only your data center, also the public cloud. Talked about this a lot today. What is software defined storage? Um, I think the most heard word that I, or the word that I heard the most today was um, policy driven. Um, but also, um, we need to leverage everything in the software um, products that we use today. Um, if it's um, just hyperconvergence, or if it's um, something like object or file or whatever, it needs to be leveraged by the software. Software-defined networking, it's actually the same. Um, application layer, control layer, infrastructure layer, everything needs to be software driven and needs to be manageable by that software. So where do we stand today with the SDDC or the customers we speak to? Uh, where do they stand with SDDC? So consolidation, that's almost for most customers done. Um, virtualization, compute, the server part of things is for big parts of the, of the infrastructure mostly done, mostly implemented. Storage and networking is getting more and more, but it's still in an implementation phase. Um, automation. Um, more and more companies are looking at automation. How do we leverage that in our data center? And how do we leverage that over, over our complete infrastructure? But still, it needs more integration. Um, if you look at certain um, vendors that give you these automation tools, um, they give you the automation tools for their products, but not for others. Um, or you have to do it all yourself. So there's more integration needed there. Um, Self-service portals is also mostly in, in implementation phase. And cloud, it's test, dev, trial, and getting more and more workloads um, over the years. So how do we manage the SDDC? Um, I took one cloud management platform. Um, in this case, it's SaltStack, but it could be many others. VMware as we realize operations, uh, if we realize suite, sorry. Um, you've got things like CloudBolt. I think the slide or the, the, the website from um, the guys from What Matrix is good on that because they have a couple of cloud management platform um, vendors um, and you can see what they offer in that cloud management platform. Um, but that's the way we're going to manage the SDDC. But, dude, this is boring. So, it's demo time. 
Yeah. Um, we have prepared a live demo, but because of the lack of data in the, the Wi-Fi here, uh, we've also made a movie. And I will the other side. Uh, this time. Okay. Here we have. Um, what we have here is, an, is a demo of fear realized automation. Um, what we will do is a is simple uh, rollout, a simple web server uh, with a load balancer. Um, but before we do uh, cre create a blueprint, and in the blueprint we define the services we need. Uh, here we do the, the, the global settings for our VMware NSX. Um, and then you see here is uh, the possibility to um, create some, some uh, uh, choose a platform you, you want to use. Uh, we will use VMware here uh, as, as basic, but uh, you can uh, choose for Amazon uh, and any other uh, cloud uh, portal vendor. Um, here we do some, some uh, basic uh, information here, the ID, the name, description. Uh, here we fill in how many uh, web services you can uh, choose in the cloud management portal. Uh, we define here which template we will use in the vCenter server. And, um, and the, uh, the, the customization we will use, uh, which we have specified in VMware. Uh, at the end, the user can choose the settings we define here. Uh, the next step we will do is, is uh, add the software components we, we uh, created. Um, oh, that, that's later. Uh, first, the network part. Um, we use a uh, virtualized network at the end, and, uh, and in the front end, we have a physical network. So we first... Um, at the, uh, the, the ex external network, and that's the, the above uh, network is, is the virtualized network. And we will connect it to the virtual machine and then add the load balancer to the external network. A little bit slow, yeah. Here we have the load balancer. Uh, we connect it, it's, it's, an, it's, it's a graphical tool, so you have to click it. Now we have the software components. Uh, before we can uh, drag and drop them in the, in the diagram, you can script, uh, using scripts you can define them. Uh, we've used an Apache, uh, PHP, uh, and uh, a simple website. Uh, we will configure. And we can uh, add relations to the, to the software components. So if, if we first have to wait for the first one, uh, we can define that by dragging an arrow to the software components. So now we have at the, the bottom the, the Linux configuration, uh, the Apache, co the installation the installation of PHP, and there uh, the website we will configure. What we have done is, uh, is uh, you we have defined the name in the, in the website. So uh, that's a very, uh, so we, we have to uh, fill it in in the, in the form. The last part uh, of the design is, is at a security group. In a security group, we have defined uh, some rules for the firewall. And we add them to the virtual machine. Okay, uh, now I will skip a little bit of it. Here we have the, uh, no, not here yet. Here we have the catalog uh, where we where we see the, the new created blueprint. Um, here we can edit the name. Here we fill in uh, Aaron's name for the website, and we choose to uh, the the resources. 
it was a little bit fast. We choose here the, the resources and the limits you can see on the right, uh, which, which you need for the, for the virtual machine. And then if you are ready, you click uh, on next and finish, and he will start the deployment of the virtual machine. And in this screen, you can see the, the, the progress of the, of the deployment of the virtual machine. And if anything is ready, you can see it here. It, it, it will appear as item in the, in the list. And then on the, load, uh, on the load banner, so you can see the IP which is used. Uh, and if we do, we can fill it in and we have our website which is load balanced over two web servers. Okay, so um, this is just a small demonstration of what is capable in a, in a cloud management platform. Um, this could be also done with workloads in Azure, in Amazon. Um, you could do things with, with Docker, with um, everything you heard of today. Um, it is possible to do it within the SDDC. Um, this is what we build. Um, like I said, it's just a little small thing to show you something, but the um, things you can do with it are endless. And I think this is what the business, mostly the enterprises need in their environment um, to make the next step. Um, probably Nigel, if he was here, would say um, everything will go public. I don't think so, um, but um, we need something where we can say, okay, we've got this workload. Maybe um, use something like Load Dynamics and see where we can put that workload best and um, choose for a public cloud, choose for your own data center, um, may it be a, a private cloud or may it just be a, a virtual, um, virtual environment. Um, you just want to roll it out and, and the company doesn't want it, doesn't care about um, how it goes. They just want their workloads to be there. Um, questions? A multi-part. Yep. Huge mess if you're not careful. Yep. You end up with a sprawl of other stuff. So how do you go about the standards to the standards? The second one is um, you're now expecting somebody to understand firewalls, applications, storage, servers, operating systems. You need a different type of person, surely. Absolutely. To yeah. To do that than the traditional IT specialist who would be a storage guy or a network engineer. Yeah. The standards, um, you see more and more companies um, dive into that also. So they will offer you certain um, applications that can do that for you and you can um, either do it by API and do something yourself or you can um, leverage their software and, and do it directly through that. Um, so for standards, um, yeah, you you need to really think about that. It's not like um, you're going to do it overnight. Um, what about security side of that? Because you just expose an application to, to something to a firewall. You know, what controls are there? Would, would there be stop you doing stuff you shouldn't want to be able to do? In this case, um, NSX. Yeah. We have, uh, we have defined the security policy, and therein the, the firewall rules are defined. So in th that's this case, but in other cases you have to look at, at it. Let me be clear, it's not something you will do um, in, in a week. Um, yeah. You have to really sit down about it and really know what the workloads are and uh, how to secure them and all that kind of stuff. You need to think about that. But it's possible to do, but it's not possible to show you that in, 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 in just uh, a couple of minutes.
Yeah, sure. But the other part is, if you don't <laughs> offer it, um, people will walk to the cloud very quickly, right? So they will just um, say, okay, if you can give it to me, um, then I'll, I'll take my credit card and, and, and just do it in the public cloud. Because they can do it. Um, so it's something, sure, it's, like I said, it's not going to be there overnight. But if you think about it and you can leverage the resources you already have um, and build on that, then you're good, right? Then you can, you can make that happen. And going from zero to 100, you want to do it in 10 seconds or in um, 3.1, then you need a Tesla. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It's okay, but given It's a lot of change, but we're already experiencing a lot of change in the IT departments already, um, even without the software defined data center. So it's something that will it will grow. Um, it's not I I see more and more companies in the last couple of months thinking about it and actually doing it, then I've seen in the, how many years do we talk about? I think Steve Herod talked about it the first time in 2012 or something. And only now you are really seeing um, companies going there and going there more and more and faster, like you said. 